Ladies and gentlemen, you have been connected to the Max India Limited Q3 and 9 months FY22 earnings conference call. Please stay connected. This conference will start shortly. Participants are connected to the Max India Limited conference call. Please stay connected. This conference will start shortly. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Max India Limited Q3 and 9 months FY22 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajit Mehta, Managing Director, Max India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of Max India, welcome to this earnings call. I hope all, all of you and your loved ones are safe uh, in this current situation. 
Uh, for the benefit of audiences who are joining the earnings call for the first time, let me introduce, I have with me my colleague Ajay Agarwal, who is the CFO for the company, Mr. Weber Podar, who is the CEO for Antara Assisted Care, uh, uh, Care Services, and Ujasvi Goshal, who is the CFO for Antara Assisted Care Services. I would just like to give a quick overview of the company, followed by the financial performance you know, for the quarter. As I have said in the earlier calls, Max India's aspiration is to make an integrated e-care ecosystem for seniors. And we had spotted the opportunity, like many other opportunities we had done in the past. So we spotted life insurance way back in 2000, healthcare in 2002. Similarly, we spotted the senior care opportunity in 2010. And since then, have been working hard to make sure that we're able to you know, carve a niche out of it. At this point of time, we are the only brand in India creating an integrated care ecosystem for seniors. In terms of market size, it's already a 10 to 12 billion market with value pools around residences for seniors, assisted living, care at home services, and medical equipment. And Antara and Max are quite uniquely placed to take advantage of the opportunity given our background in healthcare, infrastructure, hospitality, because we do need to bring all these competencies uh, to be able to provide an integrated care ecosystem for seniors. Antara is focusing on 4 million customers in the income segment of 15 lakhs you know, per annum and above across three clusters of north, west, and south. We are already present in NCR, and we will also look at the west and south cluster going forward. There are four value pools that we have selected you know, to focus on. The first one is residences for seniors, which is you know, accommodation meant for people who are relatively healthy but want to live in a safe, secure, hassle-free community. Uh, they can choose residences like in Dehradun or in Noida or going forward in many other locations that we'll open up. But if there are seniors who have age-related issues and need help in their daily chores like feeding, bathing, mobility, medication, monitoring, or have gone through a very intense medical you know, episode like a you know, cardiac bypass surgery or a transplant and need rehabilitation, or have memory-related issues, for them the vertical is care homes. And then we also have care at home in case seniors require services in the convenience and in the comfortable environment of their home, whether it's to do with diagnostics, x-ray, physiotherapy, critical care, we also offer care at home. And medical equipment, which is more in terms of bathroom accessories, orthotic aids, respiratory aids, helping them aid their recovery. This is how we are creating the integrated care ecosystem for seniors. So every need that they have, depending on their lifestyle, depending on their personal health situation, depending on their age, we're able to provide them products and services within our ecosystem. So we had commenced our journey, as some of you know, way back in 2013, when the first community in Dehradun, you know, was set up. Uh, and since then, uh, that project has done extremely well. In that project, we had bought the land, uh, constructed it, developed it, um, uh, sold, and also operating the facility. It gives me immense pleasure to share with you that 86% of Dehradun inventory has already been sold. And inception till date, we have collected about 486 crores till the end of December uh, 2021. The sales velocity has gone up phenomenally on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. We have achieved a monthly sales velocity of 4 units and a collection of 12 crores in Q3. The project debt has been reduced to 18 crores. It's further come down the month of January, but I'm quoting to you the audited numbers you know, for Q3. And a very high resident satisfaction score of 90%. 44% in fact of our sale, additional sales are through resident referrals, which is a great testimony both to the brand and the quality of services that we've been providing you know, to our seniors. In fact, the pandemic has, if anything, accentuated the need for such safe and secure communities for seniors so that they can, you know, live in peace. And the same is being reflected in our sales and collection performance. From Dehradun, all the learnings were leveraged to launch a second community in Noida, which was done in Jan 2020. That's a development model where we have a partner who's contributed the land, and the SPV has taken, will take debt. Uh, but the design facilitation, the construction, and the operation will be with, uh, with Antara. It's a very healthy IRR. Uh, since launch, uh, we have already sold 63% of this inventory. This facility is in a very marquee sports sector of Noida, sector 150. It has many you know, reputed players like Tata, ATS, Godrej, also in the same sector. Despite that, we have been maintaining a very, very healthy sales velocity, which again goes to you know, talk about the services and the brand that we have built. 
currently phase one has been launched as i said uh, about 63 percent of the inventory is gone and we've collected about 66 crores rupees in q3 fy22 and achieved a monthly sales velocity of six units and a collection of 5.3 in q3 fy22 noida of course as i said earlier the different format it's more affordable as compared to Zeradun, both in terms of the capital outlay as well as the monthly maintenance. Uh, the other advantage in Noida is given our success, we have been selectively increasing prices every year, which helps the IRR. And then going forward, we would like to replicate this model of focusing on our core competencies of designing, sales, marketing, and operating the facility as we expand beyond NCR. The success both of Zeradun and Noida is now giving us the confidence to scale up and look at you know geographies outside NCR and we'll share those details as and when we do that. The second big bet we took on the value pools of integrated senior plat uh, care platform was through Antara Assisted Care Services. This comprises, as I said earlier, care homes, care at home, and med care product verticals. We launched these in April 2020. So far, we have served about uh, in nine months, about 5,000 patients. We have launched two care homes with 70 beds, 10 beds for memory care, 16 products and services in care at home, uh, which are critical care, physiotherapy, diagnostics, nursing, patient caregiver, etc. We, we have also launched India's first mobile health checkup van. It's a van which is fully fitted out. It has an X-ray facility with the necessary radiation, you know, uh, precautionary measures. EMT, ECG, doctor concert, lab, you know, blood work, all can be done uh, through the van near the senior's, you know, house without the senior having to go, you know, for executive health checkup. In the current circumstances, it's even more relevant. On the medical equipment side, we have launched about 1,000 products, 3,000 SKUs, a very robust backend uh, in terms of inventory management, warehousing, logistics. Uh, also fundamentals, you know, of the clinical, non-clinical processes for all the verticals are in place. Happy to report we're the youngest organization to receive a QAI certification for a care at home vertical. Uh, this is similar to, for example, NABS just for hospitals. So they have certified, you know, all our processes uh, in the vertical of care at home and find it good enough for the certification. Again, a great vindication of the fundamentals that we have put in place from a customer perspective. Also in the three verticals, our customer satisfaction scores have been consistently above 80%, and for December, they were as high as 90%. In the last two years, the sector has also seen many new entrants, PE firms, uh, you know, private sector firms, uh, heightened investor interest, which all goes very well from a market expansion standpoint. In the end, I will say in terms of our vision, we are well on our way of becoming a loved and trusted brand catering to life care, lifestyle, wellness, and care needs, you know, for seniors. Shifting to quick highlights for our consolidated financial performance for Q3 and nine months FY22, the company during the third quarter of FY22 reported a revenue of 43 crores against rupees 34 crores during the same period of FY21, which is a 25% year-on-year growth. We have also witnessed a growth on the back of higher lease registration position in Dehradun, a Q3 FY22 EBITDA loss reduced by 83%. 2.7 crores in Q3 from 4.4 crores in Q3 FY21. Our PAC loss reduced by 56% to 5.7 crores as compared to 13 crores same period last year. Now looking at a nine month performance, our revenue has increased by 98%. It's gone up to 186 crores versus 94 crores nine months last year. EBITDA has now turned positive to 1.4 crores from a loss of 22.5 crores registered in nine months of FY21. Similarly, our PAT loss reduced by 62% to rupees 16.5 crores in nine months from 43.6 crores in nine months. Again, the numbers are a great, you know, vindication of all that I have been saying in terms of our strategy, in terms of what we are doing. And the company continues to maintain a very, very robust balance sheet position with a consolidated net worth of 638 crores. So we have enough treasury corpus of 378 crores and other assets of about 160 crores to support both capital reduction of 92 crores and Antara's growth aspirations. In terms of the assisted care segments, which I'll repeat are care home, care at home, and medical equipment, the revenue has risen by 256% on a year-on-year -year basis from 0.28 to 1 crore in Q3 FY22. The occupancy has gone up very sharply from 315 Q3 FY21 to 1533 in Q3 FY22. Revenues from care at home have also witnessed a 27% you know, increase and in the Medicare segment by 203%. Just to summarize, 
Our endeavor is to achieve higher growth by having a sharp focus on all the four verticals mentioned above. Antara has outlined a five-year vision wherein the company plans to invest rupees 300 crores across all verticals. As stated earlier, we have enough liquidity uh, in the balance sheet to fund the growth. In the residences, you know, segment, our strategy is enter, expand, and excel. We like to enter a particular geography, expand our outreach, and excel in our operations to deliver best-in-class services to our seniors. In the care home segment, the emphasis, the emphasis is on increasing occupancy, increasing scale, and exploring other variants of short stay and low cost offerings for care at homes to expand the different products that we already have and create differentiation. And Medicare is poised to grow on the back of industry tailwinds and Antara brand, which has synergistic businesses. Antara aspires to be a multi-location company over the next five to six years with five to seven communities and residences, 35 to 40 care homes, memory care homes, a very robust care at home and medical equipment business, thereby achieving perhaps in four to five years, for five to six years from now, a revenue of around 400 to 450 you know, crores for the entire assisted care business. So in summary, we're all set, having taken a very early bet, having learned, leveraging the learnings now to expand the 10, in the 10 to 12 billion sector and creating an integrated care ecosystem for seniors. We're the only ones attempting to do so. There's nobody else. Everybody else is playing part of the value chain. Nobody is setting the entire value chain. We are the only ones doing it. Just to give you an example, for example, in Dehradun, we are seeing synergies now because as you know, the residents age, their healthcare needs are going up, and the healthcare services are now being provided by Antara Assisted Services. So in, wherever we set up communities, the healthcare services will continue to be run by Antara Assisted Care. There are some, sometimes many people who come into our care homes who want a long-stay option, therefore they look at residences. The synergies are also playing out in terms of infrastructure, technology, and staff. Therefore, we are quite convinced of the bet we have taken, uh, and we are well on our way of becoming you know, a loved and trusted man. We remain committed to offer an exit opportunity to shareholders who desire to do so through a capital reduction process. The process, the process is well in its way. In time, will get completed by the end of this financial year, as we had promised. At this point of time, we have enough liquidity to support the capital reduction and the growth strategy you know, for Antara. Um, and the capital for reduction has been also allocated. So once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining the call. I'll stop here and welcome any questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Chaitanya Deepaksha from Silver Light Capital, please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so my first question is uh, uh, regarding uh, the nine-month uh, result uh, that I'm seeing here. Uh, in the segment revenue, we have 141 crores from senior living. Uh, could you just give a breakup of uh, you know where this 140 crores is coming from? Hello, this is Ajay. So the 141 out of 141, the majority money is coming from uh, uh, residences because last year has seen the nine months has seen unprecedented uh, sales and collection. What uh, register just explained, and so a lot of registries and a lot of possessions have happened. So approximately 120 crores have come from uh, the financial lease income, and rest has come from the operational income, the non-ACB revenue, and uh, revenues from Antara Street Care and the care homes. Okay, all right. Uh, so uh, I just uh, wanted uh, to understand uh, the operating uh, uh, operating profit uh, in terms of senior living has been shown as around 11.6 crores. So just want to understand if majority of your uh, revenue has come from sale of lease, then why is the uh, operating profit so low? You are, you, are, you are talking about the consolidated results? Yeah, yeah. So what is happening, there are three arms. So there is a 
Antara Senior Living Limited, which is a corporate, which is a corporate uh, division, which takes care of the admin expenses. Antara Purukul uh, uh, Senior Living Limited is a subsidiary of Max India, which is recognizing all these uh, finance lease income. So there, the profit is approximately 19 crores, uh, uh, approximately 12 crores. Against which gets uh, against which there is a loss which is happening in Antara Senior because of the corporate cost sitting on Antara Senior. Plus there is a uh, off loss which is happening in Antara Assisted Care being a startup company and just started businesses and all that. And that's why the profit of Antara uh, Purukul gets set off against these uh, expenses. In this is added the Max India profit to make the consolidated number. I can share the respective details uh, uh, if required. Uh, sure, I'll take that offline. Uh, my uh, second question is regarding the NOIDA project that we have. Uh, I just wanted to understand the base, uh, basic, uh, basic, you know, project finance for this project. Uh, in one of the presentations, I read that uh, the total cost of this project, including the land, is going to be around 330 crores. Could you just share a brief on how this is uh, going to be uh, funded? Out of 330 crores. Uh... 40 crores is approximately the uh, loan amount we are we are anticipating. With certain conservatism and bringing some scenarios in place, we have built in a 60 crore loan against it. So we already have a term sheet in place. Uh, we'll disclose it once we have the final sign off done. So the 60 crores will going to come from uh, loan for construction finance, and rest everything is going to come from uh, uh, collections from Bansom customers. Antara as a capital has funded approximately 40 crores towards the payment of the land. And balance will come from advance home customers. Okay, and if I understand it correctly, uh, this project is being done by the SPV called Content uh, Builders, right? We are developing this in the SPV while all the controls and uh, 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 act, uh, rights and responsibility belongs to Kantara. Uh, Content is only a land owning company. Okay, because uh, uh, the reason I'm asking this is in the annual report I saw that Max India controls 62.5% of content builders, uh, but it is still classified as a JV. Uh, and I just wanted to understand why are these numbers not consolidated in uh, Max India itself? Correct. I'll explain because uh, from a from a statutory perspective, it is it is not a subsidiary. It is an associate only because we are not holding majority shares of this company. While as per the arrangement of our DM, 62.5% of the net profit would belong to Antara, and 37.5% will go to the landowner, which is contained uh, contained owners. So as per the Indian accounting standards, you have to show it as a 62.5% associate. And that's why only the line item has to be merged. And that's what we are doing. Okay, so uh, the amount of equity that we put in in this project is just 40 crores, right? If I understand correctly, Max India is an entity. 28 crores has been put by Max India, in which we have put in, presently we have put in 23.85, while the remaining is already committed to them once they are required it. The balance 12 crores was put in by the uh, original landowners. So total 40 crore equity in the company, of which 28 crore rupees has been put in by Antara and balanced by them. Our equity has gone in the form of an ICD only, because in the in the corporate structure, we do not have subscribed for the shares, so it has gone in the form of uh, promoter's contribution, but not as an equity capital subscription. Okay, okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I had one more question. Uh, uh, regarding one of the related parties uh, in the annual report that I saw, it's called iCare Health Project. And I read that we've uh, put a 60 crore security deposit for uh, development rights. So just wanted to understand what uh, uh, this is exactly. Yeah. So that's a, a great parcel of land in Greater Noida, where we thought we could develop memory care facilities, uh, a care home facility. It already has a hospital in the campus and a nursing hostel as well. So we had, you know, the land was coming very cheap compared to the circle rate, uh, compared to the market rate, sorry, in, in Greater Noida. So that's a upfront investment we had put in. And we are waiting to see how the market develops. Uh, and then we will take a call on how to develop that parcel of land. All right. Okay. Uh, if, uh, uh, can I ask another question? I have a few more questions. I can come back in the queue. Oh. Yeah, why don't you come back, let some others also ask. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one.
next question is from the line of Devendra Pandey from DP Financial and Services. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, sir. And Good evening. Uh, sir, I have two, three questions. So my first question is on the industry side, sir. So what is the total industry size of senior care industry, uh, including assisted, uh, assisted care? And is this 12 billion opportunity only for residences, or it includes segments like care homes, care at homes, etc.? The total market size at this point of time is about 10 to 12 billion dollars. It comprises of, uh, you know, all the verticals of residences for seniors, from a medical equipment. Okay, got it. And who are the major players uh, present in residences for seniors and assisted care service business? And where Antara stands and present in terms of market share in that space? Yeah. Residences for seniors has many players, but in different formats. So there is, you know, Ashiana in affordable, you know, format. There is Primus Mantri, you know, in uh, in Bangalore. There is Columbia Pacific Holdings in Bangalore. Uh, mm -hmm. On assisted care, there aren't, there isn't any big player actually at all. There are very small one or two assisted care home kind of operators. Therefore, as I said earlier, um, Antara is the only branded player through, you know, a Max Group company, which is now wanting to, you know, look at the integrated care ecosystem play. Nobody else is doing it. Understood. And sir, can you give separate market sites for assisted care services uh, like care at homes, care homes and Medicare, etc.? And what yeah. do you see, uh, what will be the potential opportunity for this segment? Sure. So assisted care is about $1.1 .1 billion. Uh, the mm -hmm. care home is about $3 billion. Medical equipment is about $1 billion or so. Uh -huh. uh, this was a 2019 estimate done by McKinsey for us. Uh -huh. uh, as I look, if you look at the overall macro picture of India, the uh, you know the age profile is going up. Today we have about 8% seniors, going up to 12% and eventually 20% by 2050, from 120 million to 330 million. Life expectancy has gone up. The disease burden has gone up. You know, 40% uh -huh. of our seniors are now reporting cardiac issues. 17% are reporting dementia. A large proportion are now staying alone without a caregiver. So if you look at, you know, the entire, you know, uh, demand side, you know, there's a huge, you know, uh, need for senior care operators to come in. On the supply side, in the last few years, we have seen increased activity. Uh, so besides Max, we have seen Columbia Pacific Holdings in Bangalore come into residences segment. We are seeing, uh, you know, Epoch and Emoha on the memory care and the, and the daycare side. There are some investments made by some, you know, uh, companies as well. Uh, healthcare at home it, uh, has just bought Subitas. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of activity, you know, in this space, you know, leading us to believe uh, that in the next seven years, this is a sector to watch out for. So, so any estimates how much would be the industry size in the next five to seven years due to the drivers we just mentioned? Well, as I said, currently in 2019, the estimate was 10 to $12 billion. Right, which is which is large enough, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the industry. Uh, there aren't very many players, you know, playing in any case. So it's a huge market size at this point of time. Got it. Got it, sir. That would be all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Priyanka Singh from Atidan Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, so I have a few couple of questions. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, so basically, uh, currently, uh, 75 to 80 percentage of our consoled revenue is from residences and businesses, and just uh, 7 to 8 percentage is from assisted care. Uh, so can you guide us on uh, the long-term revenue mix for these businesses? Yeah, in the next five to seven years, you'll see a 50-50 mix. Okay, okay. And uh, what kind of revenues are we targeting from residences for seniors and assisted care services in next, uh, like, three to five years? And, uh, again, which segment in assisted care uh, services uh, will be the main revenue driver in the coming years? So, in the assisted care, as we have said, all these are directional numbers. You know, uh, the pandemic has changed a lot, so let's give you directional numbers. So, our aspiration is to look at 400 to 500 crores revenue only through Antara assisted care, comprising of care homes, which is our North Star, uh, and then care at home and medical equipment. 
uh, on the residences the revenue really is dependent on you know projects that we do right so that is what uh, 400 crore rupees on a four year time frame yeah. about 400 crores again in the next 3 to 5 years okay and lastly how many units are unsold at uh, dehradun currently and when can we expect the complete sale of this uh, community we only have about 25 26 units now left in dehradun and hopefully in the next 12 months you know we should be able to sell the entire inventory okay that's all for, that's all from my side thank you thank you participants to ask a question you may press star and 1 the next question is from the line of Isha Savla from Arya Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. I have a couple of questions. Uh, considering the monthly sales velocity of six units for Noida Phase 1 property, can we expect complete, complete sale of these 340 units in next six to seven quarters? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And sir, our volume in care at homes business have been declining sequentially since quarter one twenty two. Uh, we understand that quarter one FY twenty two volumes were good because of the COVID second wave. Now, what kind of quarterly volume run rate and contribution margin we can expect in this segment? Uh, so, the, as you rightly mentioned, the quarter one uh, revenues had peaked uh, because of uh, the COVID pandemic. And quarter two, quarter three, what we are seeing is uh, uh, that the uh, in the hospitals, right, the elective surgeries as well as the medical tourism, both domestic and international, continues to be uh, very low. International flights are opened very selectively for patients. And that is why we see that the uh, tourism market, uh, which is a significant demand for uh, care at home also because they need pre- and post-surgical uh, support, that has been uh, reduced. And also because of the pandemic, a lot of people are uh, avoiding having uh, caregivers come in and out of their homes. So majority of the demand that we are seeing is for 24-hour uh, support in homes. But the 12-hour support, which is usually the larger part of the market, uh, is still recovering from the uh, post-pandemic fear. Okay, sir. And so in the investor presentation, you have mentioned that occupancy rate at Delhi's care home was just 14% during the last quarter. And Gurgaon's care home occupancy at 36% is also not very high. So can you share uh, what was the peak occupancy rates we have seen in these care homes and what kind of occupancy rate we can expect going ahead? Like also by when we can expect EBITDA positive for care home segment? Sure. Uh, so first thing, as uh, already mentioned, care homes is a new segment that we are entering into. And that is why uh, the uh, ability to create awareness of these facilities is equally a, um, a time-taken uh, thing. Right? So uh, we've seen continuously uh, two benefits. Right? One is uh, that the occupancy has gone up, uh, inching up every time, that uh, uh, every quarter that we are spending. And also the uh, a loss or the people or the patients who are staying with us has gone up significantly from around 14 days to 25 days now. So I think the proposition seems to be strong and working. Uh, we are expecting that uh, individually the care homes will break even once they hit around 45 to 50 percent occupancy. Okay, sir. So, uh, so last question on balance sheet side. Like, what is the total gross debt and uh, cash and cash equivalent position as on 31st December? Gross cash and cash equivalent. Uh, Gross debt in cash and cash equivalent. I'll have to check that. Gross cash and cash equivalent. Uh, I'll, I'll share this with separately. Uh, no problem, sir. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Chaitanya Deepaksha from Silverlight Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for giving me a chance again. Uh, so my question is for Weber. Uh, this is regarding the uh, you know assisted care homes that we've started running. Now, uh, right. I I just wanted to understand what competitive advantage do we have vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, you know a hospital starting this uh, themselves? Uh, 
uh, because I'm assuming they have the doctors and nurses, and they would be able to sweat uh, their assets much better than us, right? So, I mean, from a long-term uh, view, how competitive are we vis-a-vis uh, hospitals? Sure. So, I think uh, principally what we have to understand is uh, that care homes versus hospitals, they are principally very different things, right? A care home is more a home which also has medical facilities uh, imbibed into it, right? So, for any patient who is under active treatment, right, would obviously be in a hospital. But once a patient comes out of a hospital and is not in an active treatment and just need care and support, and can't live uh, his or her life very independently, then they move into something which is known as care homes. So care homes is not some, if somebody has to be in an ICU or somebody has to undergo an active treatment, they would obviously prefer in a hospital. But if somebody is, uh, is unable to support themselves at home or are uh, 70, 75 plus and are staying alone and can't manage the home uh, themselves, they will not want to check in into a hospital. They would rather uh, stay in a care home and our homes, uh, as I already mentioned, are more focused on providing a home-like environment while ensuring that all the medical facilities uh, for care perspective is given to them. So we do not treat any patient in a care home. So if somebody falls ill or somebody, uh, they don't come into a care home for treatment. So for any treatment, they will go to a hospital, but for care and comfort, they will check into the care homes. Okay, so you don't, do you expect hospitals to get into this uh, segment uh, in the future? I mean, because it, it seems like it would be synergistic for them to get into something like this. So, uh, if you look at it only from one perspective, which is they have hospitals and nurses, then that's an extension. But if you really see uh, the principle on how they work versus uh, how care home works is very, very distinct. Uh, here, the customers are long stay, right? The focus on hospitality and uh, care is very important. While in a hospital, the mindset is uh, very focused on treatment. And if you un and most of the big hospitals will actually reduce the stay of the patient within them. Because the way a hospital makes money is through surgery and interventions. They do not make money if a patient uh, stays with them for long term. And this difference in mindset of how a hospital makes money versus how a care ad and how a care home makes money is very distinct. So it's not something just because they have nurses and doctors, it's not an uh, ideal extension for them. And even globally, if you see, there's not a single hospital chain which runs uh, care homes themselves. Okay, that's really good to know. And uh, how many uh, homes uh, should we expect uh, in the next uh, financial year, uh, if you have any sort of estimate uh, that you work on? So currently we have around uh, 70 beds and we are looking to uh, reach around 200 beds by uh, end of FI23. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, thank you. And I just have one more question and uh, this would uh, be for uh, Rajit. Uh, I, uh, this is regarding the uh, Max Bupa sale that we made a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, I mean, I just wanted to under uh, understand, I mean, uh, you know, I was just seeing the numbers. We were one-sixth of uh, Star Health uh, insurance uh, at that time when the sale happened. And the sale was made for an enterprise value of, I think, 1,000 crores. Now, today, Star Health is valued at 45,000 crores. So, uh, you know, I've been a shareholder of Max. Uh, since years and as a shareholder I just feel that uh, you know maybe we might have made a big mistake because the, the because the valuation gap is too big right now I mean uh, would you like to comment on uh, this uh, you're talking about valuation of star health not Neva Bupa right yeah I'm talking about uh, uh, Bupa compare and comparing it to star because we sold it for a thousand crores valuation so Chitanya, it's an apple orange comparison, uh, very different circumstances, uh, very different build outs. Uh, and therefore, we had promised you know, our shareholders at that time also that for those who want to exit, we'll give a very reasonable price of rupees 85 per share for capital reduction. So we had made that offer you know, very clearly to our shareholders. So very different comparison, uh, Chitanya. Maybe we can take it offline. Since I also come from the insurance sector, it's, a very, uh, it's an apple to orange comparison actually. Sure, I would really like to, you know, connect with you offline and understand the rationale for this. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.
the next question is from the line of Anand from Newport Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. So a few questions on care homes because I think that seems to be the segment uh, which is going to drive growth over the next uh, five to seven years. Uh, so if I understand this correctly, uh, you mentioned earlier that you're targeting 35 to 40 care homes uh, 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 over the next five to seven years, and and uh, revenue to be assisted care revenue would be equivalent to your uh, residence uh, living revenue. So I just want to understand how easy is it to set up a care home or, you know, how the build out will go through, say, an F23, F24, uh, because it doesn't just involve like acquisition of land, making the whole care home, equipping it. So I don't understand how uh, how easy it is going to be to suddenly go from two to like 35 to 40 in the next five to seven years. Can you just elaborate yeah. on that? Great question. So first of all, 35, 40 means about 1,500 beds or so. Uh, and these are all asset light models. So we don't buy a single care home. These are built out properties already lying there. We just take them on lease and operate them. In some cases, we have taken the full property and now we are soon experimenting with taking out part of the property only and then take more as the occupancy builds up, right? So it's a, the only money we spent uh, is on uh, putting in safety features like anti-skid tiles, while wheelchair access, grab bars, nursing stations, emergency call buttons, the physiotherapy unit. So we don't buy the land and build it out. We're all built out properties like, for example, guest houses, or your town, town houses, which we take on rent, refurbish them, and start operating. And if you look at the new model we have now just come up with in the month of January, which is taking part of the property, that is, you know, imminently scalable. Uh, so as, as Weber pointed out, we already have 70 beds. We'll soon go up to 200 in the next 12 months. So therefore, expansion to 1,500 is not an issue. These are not bought properties. Understand. Understand. So, so, so 70 to 200 in a year, you're saying, because these properties are already there, it's a question of negotiating the deal and then refurbishing a little bit and getting, getting started on this. So, Correct. And, and of course, uh, there are compliances to be taken care of. Uh, fire, etc. That also, but yeah. Understand. So now coming back to uh, the break-even of, say, suppose you acquire a property. Now you have two properties and the occupation, occupancy rate currently is 14 and 35 or, or percent. Uh, and you said 45%, 50% plus is going to be the break-even. So how long does it go uh, take for you to you know go from starting off or launching to like reaching a 45 to 50%? On, on an average, what, what do you think uh, it would play out as? What, 24 months or so? Uh, yeah, or 24 months, but remember in the last, you know, 20 months where we have been up and running, about 10 months has been pandemic disruption, right? So we haven't had any international, you know, uh, patient. Domestic outstation patients have been limited. Access to hospitals has been limited. You know, so despite that, we are able to see a 36% occupancy, you know, in Gurgaon. Uh, but normally, in a normal circumstance, within 24 months, we should see a 50% occupancy and a break-even in the first 24 months of any care room. And by the way, despite all the issues, we will be able to see that both for Gurgaon and GK. That trend line is visible to us. Right. So you're actually happy with the uh, occupancy rates that you're showing currently? Because I'm not happy, but in the circumstances that we had, we have no choice. And uh, no, 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 we also um, uh, did a, you know, um, uh, optimization of costs. And therefore, instead of a 60%, 70% occupancy break even, it's come down to 45, 50% now. Understand. No, what, what I want, wanted to emphasize was you're saying, in spite of the pandemic, if these are the numbers that you've shown, then as shareholders, you, you're saying that this, this is a number which you should be content with rather than uh, pointing out that this is a low number. Because as it is, if we come across, it looks like low, but we have to put that in the context of the pandemic. That, that seems to be what you're Okay, time is yeah, that is one. Secondly, in terms of our base model assumptions of breaking even the first you know, 24 months, that we are able to see. Right. Right. And just to just add in this, uh, you know, it's important that, you know, the building blocks are all in place. We have to move forward with our growth because, you know, this is, uh, COVID is going to stay. So now things are, as you see the first wave, the intensity thereof, the second intensity and third intensity, the intensity is shallowing down. And so we have to be absolutely ready. Once this comes in as a business as usual, at that time when people start coming back to the form which they were earlier pre-COVID, we should be absolutely ready to, you know, capture that opportunity. And as Davo also said earlier, this is a category creation, you know, job as well. 
it's not an intuitive category in India as yet, unlike the Western world where assisted living is well known and accepted. Correct. No, great point. Great point. You said that it, it is sort of not, not very intuitive in India. So I just want to understand what is the profile of your uh, clients that care owns? Is, is, that, is it like the middle class, upper middle class, rich? Who are the kind of people who are, who are your clients that care owns? Yeah. So uh, normally these are people who are 70 plus, you know, who are facing aging related issues or need rehabilitation after an intense medical episode. The, they are able to afford a four to five thousand or one and a half lakh kind of you know ticket size you know per month. But please remember, this is all inclusive. They get boarding, lodging, nursing, access to physiotherapy, diagnostics, engagement activities, all thrown in. Mm. So we did a comparison to what would it cost a senior to stay at home and engage a nurse you know for 24 hours. This is actually a cheaper option you know for them. So our target segment is you know household incomes of 15 lakh per annum and above. And we are seeing a profile of patients who are 70, 70 plus, you know, who don't have their kit and kin around them, you know, mostly, who are, you know, becoming customers to us. And, you know, for short stay, it's a different price point. Uh, that's a little, uh, about 4,500 or 4,000 per day. Uh, and that's purely for one week, two weeks, three weeks post or pre-surgery. And just one, one last uh, thing. So as you said, 15 lakh rupees per annum seems to be the target segment. But who, so these guys are typically the kids are abroad or kids are in a different city. Is that the setup that you're seeing in the families? Mostly. Understand. Understand. Okay, perfect. I think that, that, that uh, answers most of my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Keshav Garg from CCIPL. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, just wanted to get an idea that for the next financial year, FY23, what kind of top line can shareholders expect and with some idea on the margin also. Thank you very much. Keshav, very difficult for us to uh, give projections. We are in the process of you know finalizing our business plans in the month of January. And by March, we should be done. Uh, maybe the next call will be able to give you a flavor. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajit Mehta for closing comments. So thank you very much uh, for an engaging you know, call. Uh, great questions asked. Uh, as I said, I'll reiterate just two or three points. Uh, one, uh, Antara is the only company in India trying to create an integrated ecosystem for seniors for all the needs that they have. Uh, we have, you know, competencies under one umbrella given our background in insurance, healthcare, infrastructure, hospitality to be able to create this and differentiate ourselves. The last, you know, uh, few months have been a great, you know, uh, vindication to what we have built as a brand, as a product, as a service and reputation both for residences for seniors, where we are seeing increased velocity, as well as the initial success we are seeing in the build-out of Antara Assisted Care. All the building blocks in terms of clinical processes, non-clinical processes, uh, you know, products and services, you know, team, you know, are fundamentally in place, and you can see the validation in terms of trajectory, as well as the certification that we got for our care at home services and the customer satisfaction scores. So I would say we are in a good place as of now, need to now press the button on, on scaling up, you know, as we go forward. So thank you very much. Keep safe and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Max and Air Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.